Mathematical Description of Images In order to mathematically determine the location and characteristics of an image, we have to use three different equations. This equation is the thin lens equation. Sometimes it's called the image object equation, and it's 1 over the focal length is equal to 1 over the object distance plus 1 over the image distance, where the object distance is s, the image distance is a s prime, and the focal length is f. The magnification equation is m equals minus the image distance over the object distance. The magnitude of this will then tell us about the ratio of the image height to the height of the object. And finally, there's the lens maker equation, which says that 1 over the focal length is equal to n minus 1, where we assume that the light starts off in air and then goes to an index of refraction of n times the quantity 1 over r1 minus 1 over r2, where r1 and r2 are the radius of curvatures of the lens. I'm going to first start with the lens maker equation to determine the focal length. Using the lens maker equation to determine the focal length of a lens. Converging and diverging lenses come in a variety of shapes. One can usually tell the difference between the two lenses by the thickness in the middle of the lens. If the lens is thicker in the middle than the outer edges, then it's converging. If it's thinner in the middle compared to the outer edges, it's diverging. First three, being thicker in the middle, must be converging. Last two are thinner in the middle, therefore they're diverging. However, this negative meniscus here is the same thickness as the edges in the middle, and therefore that rule does not help. In order to determine whether it's converging or diverging, we need to use the lens maker equation. The lens maker equation is a relationship between the focal length, the index of refraction of the lens, and the radii of curvature of both sides of the lens surface. The equation is written as 1 over the focal length is equal to n minus 1. n is the index of the lens. 1 is the index of air because we assume that the light is coming from air into the lens. And then we have 1 over r1 and 1 over r2. r1 is the radius of curvature of the first surface that the light interacts with. r2 is the second surface. So if I look at the lens here, you could see that light is coming from the left to the right, so it interacts with this surface. The second surface is when light refracts through and then interacts with that surface. If the radius of curvature is lies on the left side, it's called the negative curvature area, and therefore the radius is then less than zero. On the other hand, if the radius of curvature lands on the right, that's positive curvature. In this case, r then is greater than zero. I'll move on to do our first example in this chapter. Example 34.1. You grind the lenses shown in the figure from flat glass discs using a machine that can grind a radius of curvature of either 40 or 60 centimeters. Then you hold each lens in sunshine to form an image of the sun. What are the focal length and the image type produced by each of these lenses? From our earlier discussion, we expect lenses 1, 2, and 3 to be converging because it's thicker in the middle. Lenses 4 and 5 should be diverging, and 6 we're not sure because it's not thinner or thicker in the middle compared to the edges. Let's start with lens 1. Looking at lens 1, what we see here is that the light's going to interact with the left side first. Let's look at the radius of curvature of that lens. With the red light coming from the left, you could see here that as I follow the curvature of the blue, of the first side in blue, that R1 is radii lands on the right side. Now, as light refracts and interacts with the second side here, you could see in green that the radius of curvature of the second side, its radius should land on the left side, making R2 negative. Since this is a symmetric lens, 
both radii 1 and radii 2, their magnitudes should be exactly the same. So I'm going to assume here that this is radii of 40 centimeters. Because these are symmetric lenses, the magnitude of R1 should be equal to the magnitude of R2. If I include the sine, R1 should be positive 40 centimeters, R2 should be negative 40 centimeters. Now we substitute this into the lens maker's equation. Solving for the focal length so that the right side is now inverted, I now put in the index of refraction and the two radii, and the answer that I get is focal length F1 is equal to 40 centimeters, and because that's a positive number, that means it's a converging lens and has the ability to form images. In other words, this image on the left here shows that the rays will then be converged to this focal point where F1 is 40 centimeters. Go to lens 2. When you look at the first surface, you can see that this is flat. The fact that it's flat implies that the radius of curvature here is infinite. So if you look at the second surface, we see that the radius of curvature lands on the left side, so therefore that must have a negative radius of curvature. So now we plug things into the lens maker equation. After substitution and calculating, I get a positive 80 centimeters, which means that the focal length 2, which is greater than 0, implies it's a converging lens and can form a real image. So that means light from the left will converge to this point when the rays are parallel. However, what happens if I turn the lens around? If I reverse or flip over the lens, then you see here that the first surface here has has its radius that lies in the positive, not the negative, and the second surface has its radius at infinity. So plugging it into the lens maker equation, you could see here that when I finally calculate that, I still get 80 centimeters for the focal length. Reversing the lens does not change the focal length of the lens. Let's go to lens 3. There are two possible radii in this problem. 40 centimeters or 60 centimeters. Furthermore, this lens is clearly converging since it's thicker in the middle, and therefore F3 should be greater than zero. Radii curvature that we choose, since both of them are going to be positive in this case because they lie on the right side, we have to choose R1 and R2 to correspond to a converging lens. Let's do both. Just by drawing the curvature, we could see that R1 should be the smaller radii and plus 40 centimeters. R2, which is has a bigger radii, should be positive 60 centimeters. Putting these into the thin lens equation, excuse me, the lens maker equation gives, putting in the values for F3, we see that we get positive 240 centimeters, which of course is a converging lens. But what happens if I had chosen the wrong values? If instead what had taken R1 to be 60 and R2 to be 40 centimeters, what does the focal length value read now? Well, plugging in the values, you see that you get negative 240 centimeters. But this contradicts the assertion that lenses thicker in the middle are converging. Therefore, you should know that this is incorrect and go back and correct it. Without proof, if I reverse this lens or flip it over, both of the radii of curvature will be negative. You will find here, though, that you'll still get a positive 240 centimeter focal length for this lens 3. Lens 4. This lens is symmetric, therefore R1 and R2 magnitudes should be 40 centimeters. The fact that it's thinner in the middle, we expect a diverging lens. The first surface here, R1, its radii lands to the left, so therefore it's negative 40 centimeters. R2, its radii lands to the right, that's positive 40 centimeters. Let's plug this stuff into the lens maker equation now. Focal length 4, putting in the values, gives you negative 40 centimeters, which means that it's less than zero.
So therefore, it's a diverging lens that will never form a real image. The ray diagram shows here that the focal length will be on the left. Faster now, I'm going to do lens 5 and 6 simultaneously. Looking at the radiate curvature of both of these, let's write them down. Looking at these lenses, the first surface here is at infinity. The second one is curved to the right, so therefore it's a positive one. Substituting in this and for focal length 5, I get negative 80 centimeters, so therefore that's a diverging lens. Lens 6, both of these radii curvatures fall on the right side, and when you get this, you get negative 40 centimeters, which also is a diverging lens.